What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York, and on the phone, we are here with Lenny of the Almighty Sanctuary. Thank you so much for your time today, Lenny. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you here. Uh, your latest record is Dead Again, right? That's your newest record. You just want to give a rundown on how the making of the record was? Well, we haven't actually started recording it, so there, there was a point where um, we, we were calling um, the record Dead Again, but... I, we're not sure. I think the, the 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 working title right now is Transmutation, and um, we're not quite at the recording process yet, but we're almost there. Oh, awesome! Uh, yeah, I know that this is the first record without Oral Dane, and you know I give you guys so much credit for being able to carry on. I, obviously, this is a different songwriting process than before, right? Yeah, I mean it, it's something to get used to. You know, Wool and I had kind of a a certain way we worked and um obviously you know when when somebody new comes in um that process to changes a little bit so it's a little bit of getting used to on on both sides but um so far it's been uh a pretty cool experience yeah i know uh live you know you've had joseph michael on vocals and you actually had uh, my good friend joey concepcion uh playing on guitar did they do you want them to just learn the material exactly how it sounds and play according to that, or did you want them to maybe bring a little bit of their own mix to the live presence and the and the songwriting process? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a good idea to, to be able to interject your you know your own your own vibe and your own um, style a little bit. I mean, there are some things that I think you know need to be touched on, and uh, you know we try and do. We try and do everything as close as we can without it being, you know, a carbon copy. I mean, there's some things that are, there are just limitations, but, um, you know, for the most part, I think both those guys, uh, they handle it pretty well. And, um, I mean, when you come out and see us live, it's pretty amazing some of the stuff that um, translates. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that we didn't play in the later years that, that we're actually getting to play now, you know, because... You know, over time, sometimes uh, sometimes it's hard to uh, get certain notes and stuff like that. You know, and, I, and sometimes the world had had some problems with that. But I mean, I, I can I can only imagine it would be extremely difficult. Uh, you know, as time goes on. So um, you know, yeah, we 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 try and um, we try and replicate it as, as well as we can. Of course, of course. And, you know, I actually interviewed Joey earlier in the year, and I mean, being that he played with Josta and Armageddon and 25 other bands, I mean, that are all very different from each other, I'd imagine that there was kind of like an adjustment that he might have had to do. Yeah, he's amazing, though. He's, he's a great guy and a, an amazing musician. I, I There's a lot of times when, when we're playing on stage and I, I just smile just because he's so amazing. I, I hear him play some some things that are probably beyond my skill level by quite a bit and I'm just so amazed he's just he's just brilliant yeah definitely now kind of like going into the sanctuary discography because you kind of mentioned it a little bit before but like I feel like a fan could appreciate whether it's you know inception or the year the sun died or into the mirror black like it almost seems like you have a formula or a sound that really defines sanctuary is there like up until now, was there always kind of like a usual template that you guys always always followed in the songwriting process? Yeah, I mean, somewhat. I, a lot of times, for the most part, we just get you know we get a good um, a good riff going, and then kind of worked out with the band. And then once we feel like it could it can get past the you know at least three or four of us, and we're feeling great about it, then then we kind of pass it on, you know, and in the, in the past we would pass it on to Whirl and, you know, if Whirl, if Whirl liked it, then we would continue on with it. I mean, not everything made it through. I mean, there's many, I, I, I can't tell you how many songs were written that um, just didn't, for some reason they didn't see the light of day. Uh, sometimes, sometimes later on they would, uh, maybe, maybe we would present it a little bit differently, you know, a couple of years later. And, um, then we'd add that song. And it's kind of the same thing now. Um, you know, every now and then we'll try something a little bit more experimental and just to see see how it works. But we do kind of have a general working vibe. That usually it's just 
you know, I come down there with a few riffs. Um, the rest of the band puts their um, uh, uh, kind of their take on it, and then um, and then we go from there. Yeah, you ever worried that the songs you never release are going to be on like a B side record and just be the biggest hit you guys ever had? <laughs> you never know. I mean, that that's you know, there's always there's always a riff uh, that I feel like is really good. It's it's just kind of hangs. We have a few that are just hanging on. And I, I, I feel like someday that they'll eventually find their way into the catalog, you know. We have a few of those. And I'm trying to squeeze a few of them in on, on, on this time around. But sometimes there's just, there's just those parts that they, they have a life of their own, but they never really get finished. And, and, and then every now and then, you know, you'll, you'll end up finishing one that, that's been around for five years, but just never really formulated itself into a complete song. So maybe maybe this time around a few of those will, will work their way through. Yeah. Um, how do you know? I always love asking bands this, and especially with you guys who have a various of song lengths, songs being between three minutes, some songs being six minutes. Like, How do you know when a song is done? Yeah, that's a good question because, you know, there, there have been times where a song, or a lot of times a song will be too long and maybe we feel like it wanders and you know after we make a demo of it you sit there and you'd be surprised how many times we listen to these songs over and over again and if one part just kind of sticks out as hey maybe that doesn't really fit there maybe that doesn't belong there and there have been many songs that um you know it was a chorus in one song but it didn't work but we moved it to another song and it worked great um like um they all have disguise and battle angels a perfect example of that. Uh, the chorus piece on uh, on uh, Battle Angels was actually a part of Veil of Disguise, and um, we ended up taking it and putting it in Battle Angels, and it worked out great. So you just you never know. I mean, it's, there's always there's always a, an edit that can be done and, and a and a and a fix. You know, if, if a song could seem right or if it's too long or too short. Yeah, you know, like um, my friend of mine attended a Dream Theater show, and I love that band, but he said he was 40 minutes late, and he made it before they got to the first chorus, so, like... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're probably the extreme version of that, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, what I was always curious about with Sanctuary is... Um, especially you being a guitar player, do you need to, I like asking like in terms of like what a guitar player needs in order to write riffs. Did you always need to like have rhythm or like a drum beat uh, laid down first so you like knew what to follow when writing a riff or did the rest of the band follow the riffs and revolve everything around that? Is there ever like an underlying armature behind every song you have that it always starts with? You know, I, I kind of have phases um, where there's a lot of times where I, I think I spend a certain amount of time, um, I don't want to say every day, but almost every day, every time I pick up the guitar, that I'm working on something new. And it's usually the first the first couple of hours that I play, and then I usually kind of get um, sidetracked and, and, and I'll do something else. But um, a lot of times I'll start out with kind of a, a drum beat, um, but then there'll be months where I'll play my guitar and come up with riffs that aren't to anything. I just... I sit down on my couch and plug into a practice amp and have a couple of cup of, cups of coffee and pound out some riffs. And then there'll be a, you know, a few months where I'm out in my little studio every day and I kind of come up with a really upbeat, fast riff. And sometimes if I'm trying to push a song in a certain direction, um, you know, a lot of times I'll come up with like a really uh, kind of a, an upbeat um, drum beat and then I'll play some riffs to it and see where it goes. So it can it can kind of change. And then, you know, after I feel like I'm on to something, then that's usually when I present it to the other guys. Mm -hmm. Do you try to execute your material uh, live as close to how it sounds on the album possible? Or do you try to maybe make... A lot? Like when I saw you on that Ice Earth show, like uh, it was very different from when I was listening to you guys in the day, back in the day. So like... Is do you try to execute it exactly how it sounds live, or do you like to maybe make the live presence a little bit different of an experience than just listening to the album? It's a little bit of both. It kind of depends on the song, you know. Especially on the on the year the sun died, um, 
we try to do everything really close and it, it's a little easier for us to do everything a little closer just because that's quite a bit newer and I think that um, it has a little more of a modern sound and maybe that's just us now it, it's kind of that's where we've evolved to so going back to like the wreckage tonight and mirror black it was a little harder harder to touch on you know um, uh, recreating that perfectly but at the same time it's kind of nice to vary it a little bit because it's a little it's a little more interesting for us sometimes and maybe even the list of listener as well yeah absolutely yeah. And I imagine, because, you know, Refuge Denied came out, what, in, like, 1988 or something like that, right? Like, I'd imagine that, you know, there has to be kind of, like, a sound yeah. evolving, too, and you, you learn so much as a guitar player that maybe, like, you try to take what you know now and apply it to the earlier material. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yep. And I have uh, two more questions for you, if that's okay. Um, yeah, know, no problem. Yeah, um, I know that uh, Sanctuary origin originated in Seattle, Washington, right? Yep. Yep. So uh, what I was curious is because, you know, when, when people hear like Seattle music, hi, uh, music history, immediately they're going to think of the grunge movement, even though you guys were around long before that. And I was curious to, was there a scene in Seattle that Sanctuary kind of cut their teeth in back in the 80s? Or did you kind of have to like uh, go south more towards San Francisco where it was all happening at that time to sort of get the name out there a little bit more? Um, there was a radio station up here called KCMU. It was um, it was a college station, and there was a guy on there. His name was Jeff Gilbert, and he had a he had like an all metal show on Sunday, and he he played he played some of the some of the different styles of metal in in, in um, Seattle, but there was a lot of really heavy stuff too, similar to us. And he he did a, he. He spent a lot of time playing um, local bands, but he also he would play stuff like Slayer and Metallica because you know a lot of the um, corporate rock radio stations around here weren't playing that. So that that kind of developed a bit of a scene. It started where um, we would all have parties and sit and listen to that radio show at that time because it was a, it was kind of the coolest thing back then, you know, where you could hear all your favorite metal bands that nobody else would play so the people who were really interested in that would get together and um just have parties we sit there and drink beer and, and listen to that show and that sort of created um kind of a fan base as well you know because a lot of the people that listened to that show ended up being you know fans of sanctuary and other bands around the uh region too like bitter end and forced entry and bands like that um so we all hung out and so there was a little bit of a uh, kind of almost like a, a thrash metal or more like a, a darker metal vibe around that time, you know, and then a lot of that went away once, once grunge came along. Yeah, I, a lot of people say that grunge kind of took over the metal scene or kind of like pushed it out a little bit, and I feel like maybe like that area got the full brunt of that or something like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was definitely a change, you know, but I guess that happens sometimes. Yeah, you know, it definitely does. I mean, nowadays, the, the Cascadian region, you mentioned, like, it's all darker, like, bands from, like, Oregon and Seattle, like, they're they're, they're writing, like, doom metal songs, which is, like, 17 minutes of, like, distort, just pure distortion. Yeah, you know, there, there seems to be a, real, a whole lot of that now. I mean, I hear that on, uh, they, have, they have a local uh, show here, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it's on, again, it's on Sunday, but... Um, and it's, it's a lot of local stuff and I hear a lot of that kind of stuff on there. Really, really kind of dirty kind of sludge stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, the final question I want to ask you if you're okay with, uh, answering this, you know, I, when I, when I saw you guys at the ice Earth show back at Gramercy, that was actually the first time I ever saw Sanctuary and, uh, you know, and there was a lot of young fans who were there to see you guys who never saw you before and you know I've heard so many great things about Warl Dane and you know how he was able to bring he really had a voice that could like sing you to sleep and scare you to death at the same time I was just wondering if you don't mind me asking working with a vocalist like that how much did it teach did he teach you a lot as a musician as well if you don't mind me asking yeah absolutely yeah I mean I'm still amazed you know 
especially now that you know a lot i i spent a lot of time um working on wreckage tonight because we're playing wreckage tonight on this tour that we're going going out on and i'm amazed because i've had to really pay attention and listen you know there's been times where you know i maybe heard a song or two in the past few years but I haven't really listened to it in depth in quite a while. And I'm so blown away by his range, his, his, his storytelling. And the guy, I mean, he had, he was endless possibilities of, uh, just creativity and brilliance. And still to this day, I, I don't know. I, I'm in awe of him and, and always will be. I mean, he was, there, there's no one like him. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's, you know, there's definitely no replacing him as, as that. But, um, I mean, man, that guy, still to this day, he gives me chills when I hear, you know, a lot of his music. Um, you know, it's never more in Sanctuary, both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I mean, when I heard Dead Heart in a Dead World, I got, like, chills. Like, what the hell? And, uh, yeah, but I, I have to say, Joseph Michael is doing a great job. And I know that War will be definitely proud of you guys for carrying on. This is what metal's all about. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one thing i got to really give it to Joseph. Yeah, I think he's doing a really good job. And, you know, Will, Will is not an easy person to try and, um, you know, fill their shoes. And, I mean, I don't really think anybody could do that. And I, I, don't, I don't really think that that's Joseph's goal, but I, need, I do know that he wants to get out there and, and do it justice and, you know, going forward with the new material as well. So, I mean, you know, I, I definitely got to give him props for that. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, just before we go, is there just any? I know that you're hitting the road. You're playing Refuge tonight in its entirety at uh, St. Vitus. Um, I'm sadly not going to be in town for that show, which is why I I had to do the interview by phone today. Um, but uh, is there just uh, anything else with Sanctuary that you would like to promote in terms of tours? This will be uploaded by midnight, so if you have a tour scheduled for like 2022, please don't announce it. Yeah. No, I mean, this is it for right now. You know, we're doing some stuff in Europe and um, we're doing the mostly this East Coast run. It's kind of a shorter run. Uh, and then we're talking about doing something um, later on in the year, too, maybe maybe on the West Coast, uh, but we're not sure yet. So. And can we be expecting uh, this new record, which is right now titled Dead Again, the worky title? But is there just a, uh, can we be expecting a release date or is just uh, don't want to dabble into that territory yet? <laughs> well, we're, we're planning on sometime in 2020, and I think the title of the record is going to be Transmutation. Oh, wow. That's that's an awesome title. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's the, working, the new working title now. Okay, awesome. That's an awesome title. Well, thank you so much, Lenny. I really appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot. Yep, everybody. Sorry, we Chris. Yeah. Sorry, we're not going to see you on uh, in, at St. Vitus. But, yeah, uh, we're looking for, we're looking forward to the tour. I'm actually flying home like the day, but, but like the day you play, but I'm not landing till like one in the morning. So. Oh yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, I'll ask the pilot to speed up a little bit. Maybe he could, I could parachute down <laughs> to the show. <laughs> well, where, where are we the next day? You can always come there. I, I can't remember where we are. But. All right, maybe I might just actually do that. Um, but yeah, cool. Everybody, we are here with Lenny of Sanctuary. New music coming very soon and catch them on their upcoming tour with Ghost Ship Octavius. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time.